All right, so welcome to episode 61 of my weekly show. This is part two of a two-part retouch. Now, if you didn't see the last episode, which is episode 60, that's actually the first part of this retouch here. So if you haven't seen it, go to my YouTube channel. You can see it just down here. We've just got this little thumbnail that says part one. Have a watch of that. It's about 20 minutes long or so. Then it'll make this episode make a lot more sense to you. But if you've seen that one already, let's get on with the retouch. Okay, so in part one, we finished off having just created that fake uh, hair and fur, whatever you're going around Zayden, so it helped to make it look as if she really had been cut out. And these are these two layers just over here that you can see me turning on and off. So I'm just gonna put those into a group and keep everything tidy, and we'll call that, uh, we'll call it hair actually, we'll call that hair. So you can see when I zoom in, we turn those groups on and off, that's the hair there. Now between uh, part one and now, I've just come in and tweaked those hairs just a little bit by maybe softening them down a little bit, by blurring them a little bit more to what we did in the video. And I've also kind of painted in just a little bit of hair, or rather smudged in some hair, going around the outline of Zayden. And I've done that using the technique that you would have seen in an earlier video uh, where Aaron Blaze was a guest and he actually showed us how we can create a brush to paint in and smudge in hair. So that's the video that I've used, well that's the technique rather, that I used for that. Now, as we go through this, there's gonna be a few other little techniques. I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly, but I'm also gonna put links to the videos that show the techniques that I'm kind of going through. So I don't need to miss out on anything. Definitely check out the description and you'll see all the links to videos so you can watch them in slow time and understand it uh, a lot more clearer if you find this goes through just a little bit too quick. So, carrying on then from where we left off, the next next thing I want to do is add in some details. Now I'm gonna to go to Filter and Convert for Smart Filters because I'm going to use a plugin. This stage here, you could completely leave this out. This is something that I quite like the look of when I did it, but it's not an essential part. But I'll show you how I did it anyway. So just remember, you could leave this step out. So we've converted to a smart filter. Oh, phone going off. I'm gonna go filter, go down to Nick Collection, and I'm gonna to go to Color Effects, Color Effects Pro 4. And the only one I'm gonna use in here is the Detail Enhancer, oh, sorry, Detail Extractor over on the left-hand side. Now, when we use this, over on the right-hand side, we've got a number of options to us, and I generally only play around where it says Effect Radius. And I kind of bring my cursor over where it says Fine, Normal, or Large, and just decide which one I want. I'm gonna leave it on I'm fine. I'm going to use uh, not make any more adjustments to these settings here, and I'm going to click OK to bring that now back out into Photoshop. But obviously, what's happened is that has been uh, the detail has been enhanced over the whole picture. But I only want the focus to be on Zayden's face. So what I'm going to do now is click on the layer mask that comes with this because we use this as a smart filter, and I'm going to go to Image Adjustments and Invert. So it now turns that into a black layer mask to hide all that detail. I'm then going to get a brush. Then going to get a brush, uh, white foreground color. Let's just make sure there's no settings in there, and I'm just going to paint at 100% over Zayden's face just to bring the details into there. That's all I want. I don't want any more details around the body. It's purely the face where we want all the attention to be. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is do a bit of a, a black and white conversion. So to do that, I'm going to press D on my keyboard to set my foreground and background colors to their default, which we can see over here on the left-hand side. In fact, let's just press X, so uh, black is my foreground. And then I'm going to come over to the adjustment layers over on the right-hand side of the screen, and I'm going to click on the bottom right-hand one here, which is called a gradient map. Now, when I click on that, we already get a pretty good black and white conversion. But I wanna tweak this just a little bit more. And again, you'll see the link within the description part of the video to show you how we do this if you want to look into it in more detail. But when we've got our properties here, I'm gonna click on the gradient itself. That brings up the gradient editor. Let's just close the properties so we can see Zayden just a little bit clearer. And then I'm gonna it's kind of like add a bit more black into this. So I come to the gradient bar here, and over on the far left, we've got these black points. I'm gonna drag that and bring it in towards the middle. And as I do that, more black is added into the image. Let's just increase the whites as well. So we've got a really contrasty black and white. 
something like that looks pretty good. Now when we click on these either points on either side, the black or the white points, once we do that, we also get a little kind of like little diamond shape in the middle. And this is for our mid-tones. So now we can finesse this black and white even more by adjusting how the mid-tones are appearing in our image as well. So let's kind of go like that. That's basically where controlling where and what point the blacks done, the gray start to kind of bleed into, into the white. So it controls how the, uh, the black and white conversion is laid on top of our image. So I'm quite happy with something like that. We'll click OK. Obviously, I don't want this to be a pure black and white image. So I'm going to change the opacity of this adjustment layer to maybe around about 40%. Oh my God, for 50. Yeah, I think 50% is good. The color in the eyes has kind of disappeared now. It's, it's very, very washed out because it's got this black and white conversion on it. Now, I don't want to do a selective kind of uh, color picture here. But what I'm going to do is just on this layer mask that comes with the adjustment layer, I'm going to get a black brush with no settings in it whatsoever at 100% opacity and paint over the eyes here just to bring back the color in there. Now, as well as the eyes having the color, you can also see because we lowered the opacity on that black and white adjustment, we've also got traces of color showing up in Zayden's lips as well. So we don't have a completely black and white image with just one area having some color in it. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is dodging and burning. And if you've watched any earlier videos, you know how much I love doing dodging and burning. And when we look at this picture of Zayden here, this face is perfect for dodging and burning. In fact, the kind of texture of her skin has almost been dodged and burned already. It's very much got that kind of sheen to it. Like when we choose like a, a leather jacket and you get perfect highlights and, and shadow areas that looks dodged and burned already, that's similar to her face. But I want to exaggerate it even more to really emphasize how the viewer will look at Zayden's face, but also how Zayden's face is going to appear as if it's coming towards the viewer off the screen or off the print. Now, the way we're going to do that, I'm not going to do traditional dodging and burning on a 50% gray layer because I think we could spend ages doing that and I don't want to do that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the layer below our adjustment, our black and white adjustment. Then I'm going to go to the channels. I'm going to hold down my command or my control key and just click on the thumbnail of the RGB. Now, you'll see now we've got these marching ants. And what's happened is Basically, in layman's terms, by me doing that, it's actually made the brighter parts of uh, Zayden uh, as a selection. All right, so what I'll do now, let's go back to the layers, and I'm gonna go Command or Control J to put that selection up onto its own layer. And I'm gonna drag that now to the very, very top. Whoops, let's just drag it to the very top of, I'll try and do that again, top of the layer stack, there we go. And I'm gonna call that Light. All right, so now I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna go back onto that layer containing Zayden, go back to our channels, and again, hold down my command or control key and click on the thumbnail of the RGB. Now this time, just like before, it's loading in the light parts. I now want the darker parts. So I'm gonna to go to select inverse. So it's now selecting the opposite. Go back to the layers, press command or control J, and it'll put the dark parts now up onto their own layer. And you can see if I turn every other layer off, here we can see all the dark parts. So let's turn those on, and I'm gonna drag this one just above the adjustment as well. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna first of all change, in fact, let's just name that one dark. So we've got light and dark. All right, so now is the really cool part. The light layer, I'm gonna change the blend mode of that from normal to screen. Then I'm gonna click on the dark layer and change the blend mode from normal to multiply. So the dark parts have been darkened, the light parts have been lightened. But that's, you know, it's a bit too much there. I'm gonna take the dark layer down to somewhere on the region of maybe 50%. And I'm going to put these two now into groups. So the bottom layer here, the dark layer is selected. Hold down my shift key and click on the light layer so they're both selected. Then we'll go to the fly out menu at the top of the layers panel, new group from layers, and we'll call it D and B for dodge and burn and click OK. Now at the moment, the whole of the pitch there has been darkened down and brightened up. I don't want that there. I certainly don't want it as much in a uh, uh, Zayden's body here. So what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to this group. So I've got my layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel, 
but I want a black layer mask. So I can do that by holding down my Alt or Option key and clicking on the layer mask icon. So you can see now we've added a black layer mask to this group. We can no longer see that effect, but I just get a brush, a normal soft edged brush, making sure there's no settings in there. And now I can come in and start adding in all this fake dodging and burning. Now the body, I want to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna actually darken this down with the brush, but only at around about 30% opacity. And you'll see now when I brush over it, it does darken it down just a touch. I'll come around the top area here. Might take it down just a little bit more. Something like this. I'm painting around the body. I'm gonna turn that on and off. You can see how it's done that on the body. But now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in on the face and rather than me dodging and burning all the highlight, mid-tone and shadow, shadow areas, I'm just gonna use this white brush at 100% opacity and start painting around the really detailed areas of the face. So around the eyes. In fact, I'm just gonna paint it all over her skin here perfect texture for adding in dodging and burning. And by us doing this, we're kind of added more contrast into this area with the details. We're now adding dodging and burning so the highlights and shadows are much more obvious. This is gonna give her face almost a, almost a 3D-ish kind of effect where it's gonna to start to come out towards the viewer. So let's just turn that on and off now, you see the difference. See how you can really draw attention now into her face. Let's just do a little bit more there. And I think when I did my original picture, I did now add a 50% uh, a gray layer and went in there and did a little bit of extra dodging and burning, but I don't want to do too much because I think as it is for now, that's pretty cool. If you want to go on and do that extra bit of dodging and burning, you carry on to do that. But I think for now, we'll move on and carry on doing the next part of this retouch. Now, to be honest with you, there's probably only maybe two extra things that I want to do to it, uh, this picture now. The first one is that kind of painterly cartoon look that you might have seen on quite a few of my images. I think it adds a real nice kind of uh, dimension to the picture, especially when there's texture. And we've got some great texture here on Zayden. So to do that, we can't help but work destructively. Now we need to create a merged or combined layer at the top of the layer stack. So to do that, there's a few ways we can do it. We can do keyboard shortcuts of command, uh, command option, shift and E or control alt, shift and E. But if you don't want your fingers dancing all over the keyboard, just go to select all, edit, copy merged, edit, and paste. And you'll see now at the very, very top of the layer stack, there's a layer that is basically a combination of every single layer below. And if I turn off all the ones below it, you'll see no difference in the picture. Okay, so once we've got that, we'll then create a duplicate by pressing Command or Control J. And we'll rename these layers now. The first one I'm gonna call uh, Texture or you could call it look or whatever. That's what's gonna be the one that holds the kind of painterly look. But the one above it, I'm gonna call Detail. Could also call it Sharpness. So let's just turn off that top layer and we'll go to the Texture layer. And all I'm going to do is go to Filter, Noise and Reduce Noise. We don't need to use a plugin to create this kind of painting look. I'm always getting asked to use a plugin for it, but it's just using the Reduce Noise filter. We get this nice big dialog box comes up. Let's just click on Zayden's eye so we can see it in here. Now the strength, I put that all the way to 10. Everything else at zero. And you can see in this really big dialog box here, this is what the result of that effect is. So I hope that's shown up on your screen. But if you put your cursor inside that dialog box, or this preview here, sorry, and click, you'll see before, after, before, and after. And it's a really nice painterly kind of texture to the skin there. So I'm gonna click OK. Once I've done that, I'm gonna do that again. So I'll go to Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise. But this time, rather than being at the strength of 10, I'm gonna take it down to some somewhere in about three or four, something like that. I don't wanna to go too strong, but I always find that just a little bit extra is needed. We'll click OK. Now when we do that, although we've got a great look to the skin, sharp areas have been smoothed out. So this is where the top layer comes in. Let's now turn that top layer on. We go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. And all we're doing here, when we get this High Pass properties here, the radius generally is around about one pixel. That's enough. You only bring it up just enough so that you can start to see the actual detail in the picture showing through this gray layer. And you can see Zayden's eye just here on the screen. Once we've done that, we'll click OK, then change the blend mode from normal to overlay. So now you can see this nice and close. This is without the sharpness layer, and this is with it on. So that's before and after. And again, I hope that's shown up on your screen. 
And so to finish off, barring a few little tweaks that you might want to do, I'll just finish off with that uh, iris blur that I showed at the very, very end of part one last week. So I'm going to create another merge layer at the top of the layer stack. Then I'm going to go to filter, blur gallery, and iris blur. And this is what can be used. In fact, let's just cancel out there. Let's just central this picture by double clicking on the hand tool like so. Then we'll go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Iris Blur, just so we can see more of Zayden. Now this is what's going to really finish the picture off, really exaggerate how Zayden's face is coming forward by blurring even more everything else except, uh, except her face. So let's put this little disc in the center. I'll drag out the outer handles just to increase the area that's being in focus. And let's drag that up. And then I'm gonna use this little disc in the middle here to control how much I want of this iris blur. Of course, we could use the controls on the right-hand side of the screen, but I actually quite like getting hands-on and coming in here and controlling the disc. So I'll take that down to around about three or four, something like that, and then click OK. And that is pretty much it. That is the full retouching workflow that I went through, barring a few extra little tweaks that maybe happened along the way that you could also do in your version. But that's what I did to take the out of camera shot, which was this one here, barring a few of the adjustments that we made in camera raw or Lightroom, all the way through to the finished picture here. Now, what I've also done for you is I've uploaded the raw file that you can actually try out all this retouch on yourself. I think it's better if you can get actually in there and do it rather than sitting there and watching. So check out the description. In there, there's a link that'll, th that'll take you through to my Creative Cloud page where you'll see this screen that you can see on screen now. And to download the image, all you do is you go to the upper right where it says Actions and just click on, oops, try and click on where it says download. Then you'll be able to get hold of the raw file so that you can go through this all yourself. But to be honest with you, that's pretty much all I've got for you. Uh, thanks for watching it. Thanks for watching through both parts. Thanks also to those of you who shared it that I saw uh, last week's episode being shared across. I really do appreciate you doing that, spreading the word and also subscribing. So yeah, that's all I've got for you this week. Have a great one and I'll see you next time.